Koe no Kitachi, also known as the Silent Voice, is a story about a young man's path to redemption as he battles the repercussions of his adolescent mistakes. I was never really susceptible to being bullied, nor do I have a disability, yet the story's narrative and well-developed main cast allowed for me to feel for and relate to each of the characters in my own way. Due to time constraints and the resulting plot changes, the movie was unable to fully explore much of the cast to the extent that the manga did. One character that was actually a major part of the film was Yuzuru Nishimiya, yet even as a main character there was still plenty about her that was left out of the movie. So without further ado, it's finally time to give her the analysis she deserves. While it is not a sin to be weak, and strength is by no means tantamount to righteousness, there are times when we as humans find it necessary to grow strong in order to defend what is precious to us. I genuinely believe that most individuals are at their strongest when they have something or someone that they want to protect. While it's a pretty common trope in anime to unlock newfound strength through the power of friendship, this is merely a single interpretation of the much larger picture and doesn't necessarily represent the kind of strength I'm referring to. Rather, I'm referring to the strength of one's mental fortitude and resolve that's displayed when they selflessly act in the best interests of their loved ones, despite how those actions may affect them personally. One such example of this is Yuzuru Nishimiya, who does everything in her power to protect her precious older sister, Shoko Nishimiya. Shoko is deaf, and is bullied throughout her childhood as a result of her disability. Despite this, she always smiles through the adversity and never displays any signs of anger. Shoko's vulnerability, along with her overly kind nature, make Yuzuru feel obligated to become strong in her sister's stead. This is put on display when their mother attempts to toughen Shoko up by cutting her hair short, but instead, Yuzuru cuts her own hair and assumes a boyish demeanor in her sister's place. While her boyish persona represents her resolve to protect her sister, as well as her desire to respect her sister's wishes, it resulted in her being mistaken as a boy when she was first introduced in the series. This led to Yuzuru pretending to be her sister's boyfriend in an attempt to discourage Ishida from approaching her. Yuzuru hated those that bullied her sister in the past, and this included Ishida before she got to know him. Because of this, she posted a picture online that got Ishida suspended for a week, and in doing so, she saw her sister angry for the first time. Unable to understand her sister's anger, she cried and ran away from home. This is when her immaturity began to show itself, as we witnessed her not only try to bully a person that she disliked, but also how she was initially unable to understand why doing so angered the person she was doing it for. In the mind of a child, things often appear much more simplistic than they actually are. They often view things as good or bad, and can sometimes struggle to see the details that expand upon those concepts. Likewise, this is very much the case with Yuzuru at the start of the series. In her mind, her sister was good, so those that bullied her sister were bad. And therefore, she should be justified in doing bad things to bad people that deserve it. However, after Yuzuru gets Ishida suspended and runs away from home, Ishida and his niece find her unconscious in the park and decide to take her home. After being around Ishida for a while, she's taken aback by how kind he is to her, and is surprised to find out that he seems to genuinely want to do everything he can for Shoko in order to make up for the past. She grows attached to Ishida over time, and even tries to support the idea of a relationship between him and her sister. So all in all, I think it's safe to say she was able to realize that she was mistaken in regards to her initial actions towards him. Despite this, Yuzuru still always tags along with her sister in order to protect her, and holds no qualms about investigating those that she deems potentially detrimental to her sister. Such was the case when she secretly filmed the ferris wheel ride with her and Ueno, so while she understandably remains cautious of others, her attachment to Ishida allows her to forgive him and realize that people can indeed change for the better. While this development was crucial in helping her to grow as a person, her naivete still manages to show itself in other ways. One such instance of this is her hobby, where she photographs dead things in order to show her sister how horrible death can be. By doing so, she hopes to dissuade her sister from ever wanting to die. Despite the good intentions behind the pictures, Yuzu's preventative measures were proven fruitless once Shoyo attempted suicide towards the end of the series. This realization hit Yuzuru hard as she wondered if she could have stopped her by doing things differently. While Yuzuru undoubtedly shows great strength and resolve throughout the course of the series, 
She's still just a child at the end of the day, and as such, there's plenty of naivete and immaturity in her decisions, but there's never any doubt in regards to the sincerity of her intentions. She truly loves her sister, and does everything she can in order to be there for her. Identity formation is a complex process that is never really completed. While there are multiple characters in Koe no Kitachi that are aware of their flaws and attempt to overcome them on their path towards redemption, Yuzuru is a bit different. Just like any other character, she has her flaws and she has her merits, but what really makes her stand out is her inability to understand those character traits throughout a majority of the series. As an adolescent young girl in between childhood and adulthood, Yuzuru goes through the common psychosocial crisis of identity versus role confusion. She spent most of her life watching out for her sister and playing the role of her protector, and as such, she's lost touch with who she is as an individual without that role. There are often times when women begin to feel as if they are weak or inferior compared to men, and this feeling can intensify depending on the environmental factors they're subjected to in their life. In Yuzuru's case, her father was never there growing up, yet she heard her mother say that Shoko needed to look more like a boy so that she'd appear stronger, even if only on the outside. As a reaction to this, Yuzuru cut her own hair not only to symbolize her resolve to be strong in her sister's place, but to shed the apparent air of weakness that came along with being a girl. I don't believe she suffers from any sort of gender dysphoria, but she did create a facade of strength that helped to hide away her true self. She's supposed to be strong, and to appear strong, and thus she does her utmost to never show her weak side to others. We first see an example of this after the passing away of Yuzuru's grandmother, who she was extremely close to. Ishida witnesses her crying by herself, but once she notices and approaches him, she's already quickly composed herself, and doesn't let any hint of abnormality seep through her tough exterior. Despite this, Ishida confronts her about it, and lets it be known that he's there for her as he walks her to her grandma's funeral. Once there, we get to witness her lack of self-realization through the eyes of the person that she was closest to, her grandma. Prior to her death, Yuzuru's grandmother told her that she's worried about how she only thinks about her sister, and doesn't try to understand herself, which was illustrated by the fact that Yuzuru talked about how much her sister had changed since the start of the series, yet she didn't realize that she'd changed as well. In her grandmother's last words that were written to Yuzuru, she demonstrates a strong understanding of her family as she talks about how Yuzuru was probably hiding her tears earlier, and her mother did the same while dutifully making tea. Yuzuru has a lot in common with her mother, and through the reading of this letter, we witness her naivete once again as she criticizes her mother without yet realizing how similar they truly are. When you're young and lacking in life experience, it can sometimes be difficult to piece together why your parents do some of the things they do. Even if a parent does everything to selflessly put their children first, it's not at all uncommon for adolescents to heavily criticize their parents assume that they don't understand their struggles, and vow to never become like them. Regardless, parents are major influences in the life of their children, and I don't think it's too far-fetched to say that we all become like our parents to some extent, whether we want to or not. While Yuzuru and her mother were both strict on themselves to make sure they were strong, and they both hide their weaknesses behind a tough exterior, the biggest difference between them is how they showed their affections towards those that they love. Yuzuru coddled her sister as she tried to protect her, while their mother supported both of her daughters by letting them experience the world, thus trying to make them strong and independent in the process. Unfortunately, there are times when we as humans are unable to realize the errors of our ways until it's too late. By the end of the film, Shoko's suicide attempt brought to light the errors in Yuzuru's way of thinking. Upon hearing her sister's letter to Ueno, which stated that she wanted to try to be normal so people wouldn't throw rocks at Yuzuru again, and upon witnessing Ueno beat the ever-living daylight out of her sister, Yuzuru said that she didn't know if she had the right to stop Ueno from doing so. On one hand, this statement could represent the acknowledgement that her sister was in the wrong for trying to kill herself. Yet I firmly believe that this was the point where she realized that while her past actions may have respected her sister's wishes, she had failed at what she initially set out to do, which was to protect her. On the contrary, actions that had gone against her sister's wishes, yet ultimately had her best interest in mind, were what saved her and gave her a second chance at life. After realizing that all of her efforts till then were fruitless, Yuzuru's self-designated role as her sister's protector was shattered, and thus her sense of identity along with it. As such, she's genuinely stunned and full of self-doubt as she questions her choices up to this point, and is then unable to decide how she should react or handle Shoko's protection. 
I firmly believe that this stage of self-reflection was paramount in helping Yuzuru to develop as a person. When Shoko wants to go to Tokyo to become a hairdresser, the Yuzuru from the beginning of the series would have done whatever it took to protect her sister from the dangers of the world. Yet the current Yuzuru is actually willing to let her sister go out and experience the world on her own, just as their mother had chosen to do when Shoko was enrolled in a normal school growing up. While Yuzuru may not have always been able to see that their mother cared for them in her own way, she was able to not only acknowledge it by the end of the series, but also implement that way of thinking into her own decisions going forward. Rather than protecting her sister from all the potential dangers in life like she's done in the past, Yuzuru begins to support her sister as she goes out and experiences life on her own. I'm sure at some point in our lives we've all wanted to, or will want to, protect something precious to us from the dangers in the world. Letting them go and experience life despite your worries is not always an easy thing to do, yet Yuzuru eventually learns to do just that. Yuzuru shows amazing resolve as she does everything in her power to protect her disabled sister and become strong in her stead. Yet despite her strong demeanor, she's just a young girl herself at the end of the day. And as such, her actions throughout most of the series show just how naive and immature she really is. She prioritizes her sister to such an extent that she doesn't really understand herself as an individual. She also has trouble showing any weakness to others, even when experiencing incredible sorrow. She constantly attempts to protect her sister from potential threats, and develops a hobby intended to dissuade her from wanting to die. Yet despite all her best efforts, Shoko still attempted suicide towards the end of the movie. This not only showed the flaws in Yuzuru's ideology, but it showed us just how powerless she was to change the outcome of things, despite her sincere intentions to do so. Yet even with her imperfections, I have no qualms with saying that Yuzuru was personally one of my favorite characters in Koe no Kitachi. She wholeheartedly strove to protect her sister, and I firmly believe that nothing she could have done differently would have changed how things turned out. Life is full of people that constantly interact with and influence one another, and while one person can certainly make a difference in the life of another, there's only so much that one person is able to do. Despite this, Yuzuru not only strives to do everything she possibly can to help support those that are precious to her, but she develops marvelously as she learns how to better do so going forward. While I personally find Yuzuru's desire to support her loved ones very endearing, I'd love to hear what y'all think about her down in the comment section below. Also, while you're down there, feel free to recommend any other anime characters you'd like for me to analyze. Thank you all for watching, and Anime Dude out.